Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. We've got to try to convince Mr. Braddon to let us ex excavate the barrow, but he's uh, he's not playing ball, is he? So the other thing we've got on our to-do list is to investigate the folklore and also to explore Bewley and the surrounding area. So I guess we'll turn our attention to that. No questions. All right, I'm no questions. Not interested. All right, you're not interested. Off with you. Fine. So that that's not going to work. So we're going to have to go somewhere else, speak to someone else. Also, the more and more I've been thinking about it, the more I'm wondering if that wasn't actually Leonard Shoulder. Like, no one's verified that that guy was Leonard Shoulder other than him saying that he was. So we're taking his word for it. He could be someone completely different for all we know. So, potentially not him. Maybe is him. Who knows. Let's head... I guess we head into town and ask about the folklore. Good day. Hey, up. Uh, right, journal. Look at this, Mr. Crozier. It's my father's journal. Oh, I? Why are you showing me? Did you slip it under my door last night? Ha! Have you gone daft? Why would I have your father's journal? Don't know. Never mind. Did the sketches inside mean anything to you? Looks like a load of rubbish to me. Let's ask about her father. I found out my father visited Bewley 25 years ago. William Bateman, perhaps you remember him? I would have been just a lad. What were he here for? That's what I intend to find out. Alright, let's ask about the stone. What do you make of this stone? He might know, actually. Don't look like out to me. Ah. Fine, folklore. Are you familiar with any local folklore? Oh, why? The old cobbler used to tell me some right stories. Swore he sold a pair of boots to a goblin when he were a young man. <laughs> A goblin, you say? I take it this cobbler was a regular at the Plough and Furrow? Never drank a day in his life. Mm. Sober as a judge. Have you been to the Devil's Toe? Yes, I'm familiar with the cairn. Some say they've seen the goblin's daughter there, playing her fiddle. Huh. I can't say I've seen her myself, mind. Alright, maybe we'll have to check that out. Let's ask about the goblin. Do you know any other stories about this goblin? I don't have the time to be standing here gossiping about old wives. Oh, come kids. on. Apologies. Where's the fun in that? That's also, oh, the stuck knife. Yeah, I forgot about that. I'm having some trouble extricating a knife from a table in the plough and furrow. Might I borrow a pair of pliers? A knife, you see. I can get that out for you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Crozier. Think nothing of it. Wait here. Oh, cool. Well, that might solve that particular problem. Not that it was on our to-do list anyway, but... That were a struggle. Here you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Saxnot. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? Never heard of it. What is it? Hmm. Never mind. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Well, it's worth speaking to him because we got got the knife from that. Now, what can we do with the knife? I don't really know. Useful to have though. Let's see if anyone else can tell us anything about this goblin. Has this woman set up set up store yet? Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Anything in here? No. Well, maybe the plow and furrow would be a good place to start because there's usually a lot of people in here, so we can potentially ask some questions. Right, Leonard Shoulder, if it is Leonard Shoulder. Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. Can ask a lot of things. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that so? Mm hmm Perhaps you could show him something that might change his mind. Mm, okay. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that perhaps... Okay, so it's just the same thing. Sax knot. What else can you tell me about this sax knot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. Okay, let's ask about himself. <clears throat> Tell me about yourself, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true, I do tend to keep my head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moor. I wouldn't change it for anything. 
I take it you don't get many visitors. Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just sounds, me and me hands. Sounds quite peaceful, to be I honest. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to bugger, eh? <laughs> Let's ask about Bewley, then. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villagers to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, dear. Fine. Hobbs Barrow. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbs Barrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Previous excavation? What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. What was it like living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. <laughs> the corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. Was it? Lord Panswick. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Aye, I believe so. He has great ambitions for Bewley and wants to share them with the world. He's painting a very different picture to what everyone else is. What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. Our paths have not crossed in a long while. Okay, Charles Bryden. What do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say, I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologise. Illness? If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after the mug of ale. But don't worry about me. All right, <clears throat> let's ask about the plans. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Bewley? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St. Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Yeah. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? I th I'm guessing this is going to be key, this whole chapel thing. Thank you for your time. Hi, Miss Bateman. Right. We will speak more later. Stanley, is this actually Leonard's shoulder? I found old Leonard, I see. Oh, it is. Yes, finally. All right, let's ask about her father. I've had some rather unbelievable news, Stanley. Oh? Remarkable. Quite the coincidence, is it not? Remarkable. Just remarkable. Do you recall my father from back then? I'm afraid not. Those were my droving days, you see. I didn't spend much time in Bewley, but an interesting turn of events nonetheless. Hmm. Mother Mildred? What do you know of Mother Mildred? I'll tell you what I know about Mother Mildred. She wants locking up. Why? How so? She owes me a small fortune on her tab from here. <laughs> Do remind her next time you see her, won't you? Yeah. I'd rather not get involved if you don't No, mind. we're not going to do that. Be careful who you trust, Miss Bateman. Right, and what about Miss Tompkins, then? Who is Miss Tompkins? A housemaid in the employ of Panswick Manor. She comes by to pick up his lordship's weekly paper. I'm surprised newspapers are available in Bewley. Aye, his lordship gets what he wants. 
Right. Lord Panswick likes to keep up with affairs from outside of Bewley. Aye, he has many interests around the country. What sort of interests? His lordship's affairs are his own business. Heard of Saxnot before? Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm. Goodbye. All right. So See you soon. Very few people have heard that name, which is interesting. Is there anyone else in here? No, not even old Cyril is in here, so that's a thing. Uh, do we have anything else on the to-do list? We don't. But I wonder if we go to the Devil's Toe, because that was referenced, wasn't it? So let's see if we can do anything here. <gasps> oh, it's that girl again. Good day, little one. Hello. Can she talk? What's this? A fiddle bow? <gasps> oh, like the goblin's daughter. Uh, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Don't be shy. I don't mean you any harm. Herself? What are you doing out here all alone on the moors? Do you live here? Nothing. Hmm. Would you like me to fix your bow so you can play your fiddle again? Yes? Yeah, I'm guessing so. And she's gone. Hey! Maybe there is more to this devil's toe Most thing. peculiar. Perhaps I can mend the bow for her. Yeah, maybe. If memories of my childhood violin lessons serve me right, bowstring is made from animal hair coated in a waxy resin. The strings don't vibrate without it. Right. Hmm. Okay, has that gone on our to-do list? Yes, it has. Fine, so waxy resin could maybe be this. We need an animal hair. Where are we going to get animal hair from? I mean, there's chickens on on the farm here. Oh, there is the the goat. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Uh, okay. Got an achievement for that. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. Yeah, good point. Uh, okay, there's nothing else here. So, I mean, really, the only the only animal we know of, I think, is is here, isn't it? The the goat. I don't know if we'll be able to get a... Can we... Oh, I don't think we can get a... a this I mean, is not mine to take. There is the bucket. The empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Is there any, like, hair around? I mean, can we free the goat? Could maybe... No. I mean... I don't really want to use the knife with the goat because that seems more like, I don't know, killing the goat. But we don't have a pair of scissors or anything. Hmm, okay. Where else could we get some animal hair? I mean, can we get some from anywhere? Maybe we go to the railway station next. So there's no trains through here, are there? I haven't seen any horses or anything. Can we... What's up this way? Oh, okay, that brings us out here. One of these is Cyril's house, right? Let's try going up here. I don't suppose he has any. James. My dear. No. Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. Okay, well, he's not helping us out at all. Uh, maybe the Mother Mildred? Maybe she has something? I mean, there's obviously the, the, badges, the badges, but we don't want to go through there. Ah, there's a fox here. Okay, interesting. 
can we okay it doesn't look like it left any hair or anything can we put no can we like attach this the knife or something no okay doesn't look like it's actually anything we can interact with it's just kind of weird that there was a pause there with the fox Although it's not there now, so maybe it's not really a thing. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Okay, fine. We have nothing to ask. If we come back down from here, is it there again? No, so it must have just been a coincidence. Let's head back this way. So we've been there, we've been there. Where haven't we been? There's the church, but I don't think there's going to be anything there. Obviously, Bryden's farm is up that way. I mean, I, I don't suppose we can ask him... ...if we can have some... Is there anything... Perhaps this belongs to a merchant. Is there anything around here that could have hair on it? The bucket has seen better days. No, okay. I mean, maybe the merchant's going to be selling some. It's possible. Let's go this way. Fresh and steamy. Delightful. Okay. I believe a horse to be the culprit. Right, so where's that horse gone? <gasps> okay, there's a horse. Hmm. Horse hair would make fine bowstring. Is that that creepy cat on the wall again? <laughs> She almost took my head off. Did 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 we get it? We didn't. Okay. I could certainly use the knife to cut some hair from her tail, but I'm gonna have to gain her trust unless I want a hoof to the nose. Okay, so we're gonna have to maybe give the horse some food. That's not mine to take. The post has been embellished with a fine bronze bust of a horse. Okay, well, I tell you what, guys, we're out of time anyway, so we'll try and figure this out in the next one. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Tony Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coumadin, and Paul Leone. And I'll see you next time.